everybody. Hi, it's lunchtime. <laughs> Yay, I'm super hungry today. Um, I hope y'all are hungry too. Um, today's recipe is perfect for fall. Uh, we're doing Mexican twice baked potatoes, which is basically twice baked potatoes with a chili cauliflower rice mixture in the center, which sounds perfect for me. Um, it's nice and breezy today. The rain went away, so nice. Um, we are cooking from the Whole30 Cookbook by Melissa Hartwig today. Um, this is actually from my personal collection because I love this cookbook so much. It is filled with really great, flavorful, fresh foods. I think that they are delicious. So yeah, I'm doing potatoes two weeks in a row. If you would like the recipe, if you decide um, you uh, wanna cook this after watching, the recipe will be up on our website. Um, full disclosure, I don't know yet what we're gonna cook next week. I have to uh, look for a cookbook when I go to work tomorrow. I wasn't sure and then I lost track and I thought maybe I would use this one twice in a row but I kind of want to see if there's something else a little variety but uh, I do love this cookbook there are a lot of really great recipes in this cookbook um, so I currently have my potatoes in the oven right now um, preheat the oven to 400 degrees scrub the potatoes pat them dry pierce them and then uh, stick on a baking sheet and bake for about an hour or until tender when poked with a fork. So uh, they've already been in there for, I'm gonna say a little over half an hour. So we'll see, hopefully they're done. I, I did pick nice big potatoes too. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, because you know, you, you wanna scoop out all the flesh in the center and then refill them, make these little boats. I'll show you the picture. And one, one time, one time I tried to make twice baked potatoes that were stuffed with a uh, spinach artichoke potato dip. And I guess the potatoes that I used just weren't big enough and they were so flimsy and it just didn't work out. So we're gonna try this. I'll show you the picture. They look delicious. There we go. All right, ready. It's just the position that this camera is in and if I touch it, it's gonna fall. The picture looks great, but you'll see what they look like in a real person. Yeah, this, if I touch this thing, it's gonna fall. So let's not. <sighs> calm, right? Are we calm today? I hope so. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna get started. Um, this recipe also tells you how to make cauliflower rice from scratch. If you would like to get a head of broccoli and make it yourself that way, um, it's fresher. Um, perhaps you're using less packaging. I just got the rice cauliflower from the freezer. This, is, this show is all about this show. This program is all about just using what you've got. Doesn't need to be fancy. I do like using a fresh head of cauliflower though to make uh, lots of other things, but uh, for the rice cauliflower, the frozen will do. Store-bought is fine, like they say on TV. Um, but I do appreciate that it tells you, you know, you can do this with the head really not that hard and it really isn't um, but we're gonna start with the oh yes you're supposed to okay so remember I don't I don't always do everything to the letter so this this book gives a very good recipe for making your own taco seasoning um, that you can then put in a jar and save for later um, so it gives measurements like two tablespoons of chili powder, one tablespoon of cumin, salt, black pepper, so on and so forth. And then when you go to season both the beef at the, I think it's just the beef, it's just the taco mix. It's like, okay, just a tablespoon. There's so many spices in there. So it teaches you how to make your own spice mix that you can then reuse at a later date. I don't feel like doing that, so I'm just going to eyeball the spices in there like I usually do. Mm, it's going to be fun. Okay. <laughs> it's the middle of the week y'all okay um so yes yeah, so you put the potatoes in the oven 
Then you make the taco seasoning, which is combining the chili powder, cumin, salt, black pepper, paprika, coriander, garlic, pep garlic powder, and red pepper flakes. Now we're going to start with the meat. So I'm got, I have some olive oil here that I'm gonna heat in my pan. Make sure that gets nice and hot and then I'll add the beef to it. Um, too, too hot. Oh, I need my hot sauce and vinegar. So you also need um, onion and garlic. Spoiler alert, I didn't feel like chopping onion and garlic, especially after last week. I don't know why, my kitchen still smells like onions. My kitchen still smells like onions. I I think it's the microwave, because I think when I heat up the leftovers, my kitchen still smells like onions. So I'm using onion flakes and garlic powder. Um, so it's, it's the beef together with the onion, garlic, some hot sauce if you would like. Um, and apple cider vinegar, and then the seasoning. So let me go, I knew I was forgetting something. Let me go grab the, it's right there, the hot sauce and the vinegar. While the fridge is open, I might as well grab the salsa for later. No, I'll wait on that. Okay. Um, get my measuring spoons. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna add in the beef, and then I'll season it with all of the things, and add in the vinegar and the hot sauce. Um, and it says the hot sauce is optional; you don't have to add it. But I do. Um, I do like a little tang. Um, and if you don't eat beef, you could easily make this with turkey or whatever else you want. All right, I'm washing my hands. mush this all up and let it start to brown and that's when we'll start to add the ingredients uh, just because I do want to get it all spread out a little bit first so it's not just in one big chunk because as it starts to brown I just want to make sure the ingredients all get incorporated really nicely in there. Alright, and of course the pan will have to get up to temperature just a little bit again the meat did come right from the fridge, which is good. All right. All right, so let's see. We need three quarters of a teaspoon of hot sauce. I'm going to start with half a teaspoon just to see. Um, you could totally play with all of the flavorings and everything because it's to, it's to your taste. So I'm going to start with half a teaspoon because I have the other seasonings in there. So, you know, we'll see. Actually, all right, do a little more. I like hot sauce. Let's be real, I like hot sauce. Okay. And then how much apple cider vinegar? Just a scant eighth of a teaspoon, just a little dash. I don't know why it's in there, but I'll follow the recipe. Just a little dash. Uh, let me add in these onion flakes because they need to soften up and then I'm going to add the rest of the seasoning and we're going to start stirring and mixing and letting it all go. Okay. This is also like a really good recipe just for like taco meat if you want to do any kind of taco night, burrito night, whatever night. And I like that it's a fresh um, seasoning mix that you're making yourself so you know that there are no additives. You're controlling how much salt is in it, which is really nice. Um, so I'm going to do, speaking of salt, I'm going to add my salt in now because there's no salt in anything else. Hair out of 
fire. All right, let's see if I can get these ratios right. So some red pepper flakes. I'm just going to do a little shake because that gets intense, right? Good stuff, though. Um, some smoked paprika. Again, just a little bit because the smoky flavor can sometimes overpower everything else. Just, I'm just eyeballing everything. I'm sorry, folks. The regular recipe is on the website. Um, chili powder. You definitely want the most of the chili powder for your ratio here. Bunch of good shakes in there. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> what else? Um, some cumin, which really gives it that flavor that you're looking for. I love the Instantly smell it. Some coriander. Just a little bit, about as much as I added of the paprika. You don't need a lot. Come out, come out. We went through this last week. It does not want to come out of this container. Come on, come on, buddy. All right, let's mix and see what happens. starting to get nice and brown. So now we're going to flip it and let the parts that are still pink get nice and brown and let the seasoning kind of hydrate into the meat and get all mixed in. It's starting to look good. It's starting to smell good. And then once the meat is cooked, like I always say, Give it a taste and you can readjust your seasonings uh, to your taste, to the taste of your family. If you have kids or a family member that you're cooking with or for and they don't like spicy, you know, watch it on the red pepper flakes. They sneak up on you. Um, my grandpa loved putting red pepper flakes on everything. Uh, I did not inherit that from him. I mean, a little bit. I guess I like spicy food a little bit, but as far as I remember. All right, so I'm gonna let this brown. Again, you do, you also still want it to get, to sit in the pan a little bit, because I want, I do want some color on here. Like I always say, the, the color that you get is extra flavor. Um, stir frequently until the meat is browned about eight minutes, then transfer the taco meat to the bowl. Then we're gonna work on the cauliflower rice. Um, yeah, this is making me have like taco night feels. I'm enjoying it. But instead of a taco shell, I'm using potatoes. I think that's a pretty good healthy swap. Um, yeah, I really like potatoes. They're a main food group for me. Uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but... I definitely like options. So, you know, if you, again, like I've said a couple of times about some of the cookbooks that I use, if you are serving to a lot of people and, okay, maybe I can't have, this person can't have corn, but this person doesn't eat wheat, this person does eat wheat, okay, so I'm going to have regular tortillas, corn tortillas, what about for the person who's allergic to corn, um, the potato boat. That's such a good idea. That is an awesome, awesome idea. I'm a big fan. Um, it smells really good in here right now. So I'm going to say that. It smells exceptionally wonderful. Um, I opened the window and I put the chair there because usually when I open the window and put the chair there, Licorice likes to sit in the window and it's adorable, but I guess she doesn't want to join us today. Uh -huh. You also want to let this cook enough that the liquid from the fat and your olive oil cooks out, and it will happen. Um, you just want to keep it moving. You don't want your meat to stick to the bottom of the pan. You want to make sure it's getting evenly cooked. Um, if you're using the onion flakes like I am, you want to make sure they're getting hydrated. Which I can see some of them are, are turning translucent and some of them are not yet. So we're just going to keep mixing this around, make sure everything gets cooked and browned evenly. Say 
about another minute and it'll be good enough for me to be able to taste. So I'm going to get a spoon. And then let's see what happens when we do the cauliflower rice. Um, yeah, so the cauliflower rice doesn't use the taco mix because... Oh, I also need tomatoes and broth. I forgot. I have them, but I forgot. So we'll get there. We'll get there when we get there. I thought I prepped everything. But now I'm rereading this and I'm like, oh yeah. I also forgot to get guacamole. I mean, in all fairness, I got avocados. Um, so you can top this with salsa and guacamole. If you're not dairy-free, some sour cream, a little bit of cheese. I do have a dairy-free, um, like, queso. And I, I had gotten avocados, but true to their usual form, they are not ripe today, and I'm sure all four of them will be overripe tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see. All right, heat mixing. Don't let it stick to the bottom of the pan. I'm getting some nice color in here. I'm gonna give a little taste. See, let's see how the seasoning is. Hot. I don't want to burn my tongue. I'm burning my hand. Okay. I need a little more of everything. Not smoked paprika. I can taste that. I definitely need more salt. chili powder, and I think I need some more garlic powder. And then I'm going to, um, some more cream into it. I'm going to mix it up and let it sit for like a minute because again, the spices need to kind of hydrate and, and mix in, so I can't taste it instantly and hope that it's been fixed. i got to give it a minute for them to join the party that's happening in this pan. Okay, here we go. friends get cozy together for a minute. <laughs> Maybe another dash of hot sauce. I like hot sauce. Alright, All right, let's taste it. And if it's good to go, we can put it in a bowl and set it to the side, right? much better. Yep. And the salt, too, just makes all the flavors really round. Now I can taste the cumin and the chili powder, but I can taste, like, the flavors. It's not... And there's a little bit of warm heat on the back of my tongue, but it's not spicy. It's not overwhelming. So, again, at this point, if for you, you want a little more heat, add in some more of the uh, red pepper flakes. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in my bowl. Some leftover Cornish paste calling my name. <laughs> comforting and delicious. Yes, we can all use things that are comforting and delicious today, yes? Um, <laughs> so we're going to keep, I'm going to turn the heat down on this. We're going to keep the same pan because it's got flavor in it, right? I don't want to lose the flavor from the seasonings and some of the brown bits at the bottom of the pan. Um, so we're going to keep the same pan to cook our cauliflower rice in. Alright, scoop that up. 
that out. Oh yeah, getting nice and brown and flavorful. It smells really good in here. All of my onions are translucent and dehydrated. I did not want to cut more onions. Just absolutely not. So I think what happened last week was that I, um, when I went to go do leftovers of the lamb stuffed sweet potatoes, I put the red onion parsley salad right into the microwave just to kind of soften everything together because the parsley salad was already wilted, so I figured whatever, right? Um, and my whole house smells like onions now, so. Um, I'm going to put this to the side and we're going to go ahead with our cauliflower rice, um, tomatoes, onion, broth, hot sauce. Okay, let me get the, let me turn this off actually, and let me get the broth and tomatoes that I forgot about, which I bought specifically for this. to read the can because I know it's like diced Italian tomatoes okay is it from Italy or does it have Italian seasoning in it we don't want Italian seasoning in our Mexican inspired taco stuffed potatoes that's a terrible idea okay so let's see what we're doing here there's a quarter cup of the tomatoes So then I'm going to have to figure out what to do with the rest of this. I'm going to get my chicken broth in there. I, I got some of my favorite bone broth. Use whatever chicken broth you like. Squeeze corners together and then tear along the line. Squeeze. There we go. And it says it's easy to do. It's not easy to do. It's a lie. And then I'll get the heat back on once I have some liquid in a pan. I just didn't want it to burn dry, you know? So the thing is that all of the liquid is going to cook out and it's going to hydrate your cauliflower really nicely. Um, my, since mine was already frozen and then microwave, it doesn't need to hydrate so much. So I'm not going to add that much liquid. I'm kind of eyeballing it a little bit to cover the bottom of my pan. It's also going to help me scrape up all of the good brown stuff at the bottom of the pan from, uh, go, from when I cooked the beef. So I'm just going to go ahead and start scraping that all up. So good. I'm gonna move the broth box in a second so you can see what I'm doing. But I am scraping up all of the brown stuff from the pan with this broth and tomato mixture. I'm getting a nice breeze from the window. I'm feeling good. Okay, so what comes next? Um, the cauliflower, right, of course. I'm gonna put the cauliflower in, right? That's the big thing. This is what we're making. We're making cauliflower rice. Okay, I'm gonna put that right on in. So this can start to cook. Like I said, mine is already cooked um, from the microwave, so I didn't wanna add that much liquid. Uh, if you're doing a fresh head of cauliflower, it's going to need the liquid to help cook it down. And we just go here, we're gonna knead it, rinse my hands. This incorporated and then we're going to add all of our seasonings and spices again with the hot sauce the vinegar and this we're going to let cook a little while longer because it like i said it needs to cook down we need some of that liquid to evaporate it'll cook down all right all right so while these play together let's see which um seasoning so hot sauce 
no vinegar, no vinegar this time. Read the instructions, no vinegar. So we're gonna do some hot sauce. Like one and a half teaspoons, so I'm gonna go for it. Okay, that was a lot of hot sauce. I'm okay with it. Um, garlic, again, I'm using garlic powder, but this calls for some minced cloves. I'm using garlic powder. Cumin, cayenne, I don't have cayenne, so I'm gonna use chili powder again. I should get cayenne. I feel like I've done a bunch of recipes recently where it's like, and your cayenne pepper, and I don't have my cayenne pepper, so. And red pepper flakes. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix this all together so I can get my seasonings well incorporated. And I'm also gonna go ahead and check on my potatoes while I let this cook down and simmer. So I have it hot enough where it's bubbling and it's gonna simmer down. Um, and, and we'll see if we can get uh, this to dissolve. And I, I made much more than I had. Like I said, I had two potatoes. So it's, you know, four little boats. Um, definitely have way more beef and cauliflower rice than that. But these will make really nice leftovers on their own, just as like a little beef and rice dish. Okay, I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit now that it's bubbling, right? And I'm gonna check on my potatoes. Yeah, see if I can stab them if they're tender yet. I mean, it's been almost an hour, so. Okay, I mean, the knife goes in pretty, ooh, that one's, that one's getting close. All right, they should be done soon. Okay, not bad. The smaller one is more close to done, obviously. All right, um, I have this whole jam, jar of tomatoes now. I'm gonna make some sauce. I have some, um, not pasta, but heart, hearts of palm pasta. I love hearts of palm, but apparently right now it's very trendy to make pasta out of them. And uh, I picked up several boxes of already shredded hearts of palm pasta from Trader Joe's several weeks ago. And they've kind of just been sitting and going, when are you gonna make a pasta dish? So. Keep stirring this. You don't want it to burn on the bottom. You want to keep it moving. And my liquid is starting to cook out, which is pretty nice. I'm gonna give it a taste. Um, I didn't put any salt in here, so I just want to make sure that it uh, has some flavor, right? and hot. Here we go. Oh, very hot. Very spicy. A little salt, just a little. But it's very spicy, but it doesn't taste like much. And like I always say, salt will bring out your flavor. Up, we're going to continue to let this cook. I'm going to get a bigger bowl uh, to put everything in because what's going to happen next is we're going to, uh, and the liquid is actually cooking out of here pretty quickly, which is good. Um, what's going to happen next is we're going to combine the beef and the cauliflower rice and the insides of the potatoes, and we're going to put it all together and then put it back in the oven and then eat it. So let me get a bigger bowl for this. A bigger 
your bowl. And once this is done, I'll show you, I'll bring you closer at risk of dropping the whole thing, the whole rig. Um, so see, it's bubbling really nicely right now. And I'm just gonna keep mixing it up. The liquid is definitely cooking down, which is what we want. Closing the dryer. And so see, every time I stir it around, then I also kind of flatten it out again so that the liquid can evaporate. I'm gonna pull my potatoes out of the oven so that uh, I'm not gonna be playing hot potato too badly when I go to cut them in a few minutes. I'm gonna be playing hot potato, it's fine. I'm just gonna say like thank goodness it's oven using season again I'm so glad that I can turn the oven back on and not worry about it being too hot I love roasting things and, and getting them all delicious like that um, so I'm pretty excited that it's time for me to use the oven again all right I'm gonna give this a stir while the potatoes cook I'll put my beef in the big bowl yeah, this is almost ready. And again, if you want to cook some stuffed potatoes yourself, the recipe is on the website. Use whatever kind of meat you would like. I would suggest turkey if you don't like beef. Um, I don't like turkey though, so I use beef. And this recipe calls for beef, but. All right, so I'm gonna turn my heat off, let that just kind of simmer down. Taco meat in here, but I'm sneaking a taste of. Mm, very good. Constantly washing my hands constantly not just because I'm cooking but because now right like I mean did people not wash their hands before March but now it's really a habit right um, it's kind of especially while I'm here in the kitchen it's kind of like um, if you ever watched Rocco's Modern Life which was a cartoon in the 90s uh, Philbert's like turn the page wash your hands turn the page wash your hands and I'm like put the beef in wash your hands put the cauliflower in wash your hands You are nice and cooked down. You are ready to join the beef. You are ready. There we go. Yeah, look at that. The liquid is pretty much all entirely gone. Whatever is left in there will be nice to help uh, with our potato filling. There you go, friend. Ooh, nice. Okay. Put that over here a little stir and then it's time to play hot potato and try to cut that potato open while it's still fresh from the oven. Right. So yes, yeah, so this mixes it all together if you can see that. Okay. And it looks good and it smells so good. Like I said, if you just have this in a bowl by itself, make a little Tex-Mex bowl, Put this in a bowl, get some salsa, some guacamole, if you eat dairy, some cheddar or Monterey Jack, and some sour cream, a little fresh cilantro on top. That's good. Okay. All right, so let's put this to the side. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. Remove the potatoes from the oven and let cool 10 minutes. Uh, slice each potato in half lengthwise 
using a large spoon, scoop out the center, leaving about a quarter inch of flesh around the edge so it doesn't collapse like the first time I ever tried to make twice baked potatoes. Uh, place the potato flesh in a large bowl with the taco meat and cauliflower rice stirred to combine, scoop filling back into the potato shells, and return to the baking sheet for 10 minutes until heated through. Top with salsa, guacamole, and cilantro to your liking. Sounds pretty good. So we're gonna play hot potato now. Good luck to me. I'm gonna get these smaller pot holders and see what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna start with this one. I know that this one is definitely done. Ooh, the skin's crispy. I love it when that happens. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and slice this guy in half. Come here, buddy. Oh, it's not that bad. All right, here we go. I love it when the skin gets, ooh, this is nice and soft. This is nice and soft. We're good. I always worry about my oven not doing the job, but I'm sorry for doubting you, oven and the potatoes. There we go. Nice and soft on the inside. Just break, finish breaking that apart. All right, let's see about you. Oh, you're done. Oh. No, you're a little stubborn in the middle, but that's all right. We're going to scoop that out and cook that, right? So. these all in here nicely. Perfect. Okay. And we're going to scoop out the potato flesh. That sounds really mean. Okay. I'm going to scoop out their flesh and put it in this bowl. Tis the season to be spooky. Okay. All right. So you can see I'm just, I'm not going directly to the edge. Um, I'm just getting close enough because if you don't leave enough of a perimeter, it will collapse, it will not hold, it will be really sad. All right, there we go. All right, scoop you out, my friend. Come on, come on. Oh, I made a hole in the bottom. I, that's the, one of the other things that I did last time, too, is that I paid, like, so much attention to the perimeter, and I forget, don't go all the way to the bottom either, but it's fine, right? It's fine. Potato is gonna be delicious no matter what. All right, come on. Right, so if you do wanna make a boat, don't do what I'm doing. I just got really overzealous in my potato scooping and just went for it, but it's all right. It's fine, I'm gonna shove a little piece of potato down to the bottom. There we go. All right. It's not even that much potato flesh, but I just have four halves here. Okay. Let's try again on this other potato to not go all the way down to the bottom. All right. Don't go all the way to the bottom. I have to sing that little song to myself to remember. I'm sorry. All right. So I'm just going to scrape from the top this time following my little template cutout that I just did. <laughs> Get in the bowl. Come on, potato starch. All right. There we go. This one's better. All right, that one's coming out better. I can still see the skin on the other side, but at least I can't see through to the pan. Okay. Get this one. still has some more flesh that it can throw. And the thing is, I mean, this is a really hearty meal. It's fairly healthy. Obviously, if you are in the low carb life, you're not going to want to use potatoes. But you know what? Live a little, right? Live a little. Um, but it's, I mean, it's healthy, fresh. There's tons of vegetables in here. There's tons of protein in here. Uh, this is a really healthy meal. I'm into it. Okay. So we got that. Let's try This one still needs a little more time. 
Can you lay on get this one? Oh, yeah, broke it. Broke it down. I think patience is the key to making the hollows for your twice baked potatoes. Which, when I'm hungry on a Wednesday, is not always my virtue. All right, this one actually does have a nice little boat though. When I'm done scooping out this last one, I'll show you the mess that I've made in here. If you can't see it already, I know it's a little far. All right, one more. One more, scoop it out. And then I'll just kind of mash that all in there. Um, there's really not even that much potato to mash in there, despite how large these potatoes are. But all right, almost there. This one definitely has more flesh. Come on, come on, potato. I guess it's not so much about like the digging in motion so much as it is like the scraping motion. All right. There we go. <gasps> this one is good. All right, I'll show you all. This one is good. That's a good one. That's a good sturdy one. I have some little pieces of potato in here that I don't want to burn. That's a good one. That one is sturdy and ready for the party. All right. So I'm gonna mix this up and then I'll show you all my little sad potato boats. <laughs> Let me mix this up. And again, this, this also kind of, I mean, first of all, you don't want to waste that delicious potato. But it also, um, any last little bit of liquid, this is gonna absorb. It's gonna make, make it nice and thick and filling and rich. And especially if you're super active, you need these carbs in these potatoes. You gotta love these potatoes, right? Mush that all together. Let's see. It's a rather solid piece of potato. I'm gonna smush it with the back of my spoon. There you go. There you are, buddy. Okay. Ooh, it's good. There we go. <laughs> We're improvising here as usual, right? Closer so you can see my little potato boats. Ready? Okay. So there are my little potato boats. This is the one where you can see the bottom of the pan. Oops. This one's pretty good. This guy collapsed a little. There, see, like that's not good. But you know what? It's fine. This one's my A plus perfect student. <laughs> All right. Dump it all. Please dump it all. We're still here. Okay. So now I'm just going to scoop this all back in here, put it back in the oven for 10 minutes, um, and then I'm going to eat. All right, so see this just goes right in here, fill it up, pat it down so you get maximum filling to potato ratio, and really pile it on high, right? Why not? So, you know, we're gonna put this back in the oven just to continue to make sure that the potatoes are nice and tender all the way through. Like I said, the, the bigger one, you need another few minutes anyway, which is good. Um, and also at this point, if you're adding any cheese to the top, put the cheese on there. It's gonna melt and bubble and get brown and delicious on top of there. It's gonna be so good. Now's the time for that. I'm just gonna pack this in. Try to run away from this potato. Okay, one more to fill. All right. I'm gonna add a little more on top. Okay. All right, I still have plenty of this mixture left, so uh, maybe 
look at some fresh lettuce and make a bowl for my leftovers for this week. I feel like that would be um, absolutely amazing. All right, so I'm gonna put this right here. This is gonna go in the oven. It's gonna be there for 10 minutes, but we don't need to sit for those 10 minutes. Um, it's already like 12.45 or so, so. <laughs> Apparently I'll taste the filling again to let you know how it tastes with the cauliflower lace in it. I mean, it's delicious. Excuse me. It's very good. Um, and you know what the texture of the potato mashed up in there? kind of lends its own natural creaminess. Mmm, nice and warm. I do not go overboard with a crushed red pepper, but it's really just nice and warm. You know when something is like just perfectly spicy and you feel it at the back of your mouth, at the back of your throat, and it's just perfectly spicy and warm? That's this. It's perfect. Um, yeah, the mashed potato in there just kind of lends to its own creaminess and, sm and smoothness. And like I said, this is really healthy. This is super delicious. So, um, cauliflower on my arm somewhere sorry I'm very distracted <laughs> I'm very hungry that's what the real deal is that I'm like super hungry so I'm very excited to eat this so I'm gonna go ahead and put my leftovers in a bowl in the fridge and um, wait for my potatoes to warm back up and then I'm gonna have lunch and you're not gonna be here for that part but that's okay uh, thanks so much for tuning in like I said, this recipe is available on our website on the adult page under book cooks. It's under our weekly programs pretty much all the way towards the bottom. So if you uh, decide that you would like to cook this recipe and give it a try for yourself, go right for it. Or you can um, go on to buckles.org and you can request a copy of the Whole30 cookbook for yourself so you can see this recipe and others. Um, and I will, I will figure out what we're going to cook next week. I don't know. Call me. I don't know. We'll see, I'll post the new recipe on our website either tomorrow or Friday so you can see what we're gonna cook next week if you would like to cook along for lunch next Wednesday at 12. All right, everyone, that is it for me for today. Thank you so much for joining and I will see you all soon. Bye.